<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On the Huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's the breakfast that brings cheers from coast to coast. The breakfast that wins praise from many a He-Man Hollywood movie star, too. It's swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Tomorrow, sure, try this thrifty deluxe breakfast treat. You'll cheer, too, for Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, had just returned to the police post at 40 Mile after a six-week patrol in the Peel River District far to the north. Inspector Maynard, who was in charge of the post, listened to the sergeant's report, then leaned back in his chair and said, Sergeant, the Aurora Trading Company down in Dawson City is organizing a train of sleds for a freight shipment to Skagway. They're asked for uh, police protection. I take it the shipment's pretty valuable, sir. Mighty valuable, Sergeant. There'll be at least a dozen sled loads of pelts, plus a lot of gold dust. I see. Are they keeping it secret, sir? Well, it can't be much of a secret by now, Sergeant. They've been scouring the creeks for dog teams and drivers. As a matter of fact, a company agent hired a couple of men here in 40 miles just yesterday. Name of Gannon and Tate. Gannon and Tate? I don't believe I know them. Uh, Tough-looking customers and no mistake. Oh, and incidentally... They've got the biggest, most vicious-looking lead dog I've ever seen in the territory. Must stand at least a hand taller than King here. Oh. So, uh, Sergeant, I'm assigning you to guard the convoy. Can you be ready to leave for Dawson tomorrow morning? Yes, sir. Matt McGrath and his young son, Timmy, lived in a little cabin on Half Moon Creek, midway between 40 Mile and Dawson City. Life would have been lonely for the boy had it not been for the big, good-natured dog called Skipper. Come on, Skipper boy. Bring it here to me. Bring it right here, Skipper. Come on. That's right. Oh, Timmy, I don't know what you'd do if anything ever happened to that pooch of yours. Hey, look, Dad. There's a dog sled coming. Yes, so there is. A couple of men are driving it. Gee, just look at that lead dog. Sure is a big brute, isn't he? Mean looking, too. Howdy, strangers. Howdy, mister. Mind if we stop off and rest a bit? Yucks, no. Make yourself at home. McGrath's my name. Mine's Gannon, and this is my partner, Tate. Howdy, I'm, mister. I'm glad to know you. Say, that's quite a lead dog you've got. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what kind of a dog is he? Half mastiff and half husky. Uh-huh. Bought him off a whaling skipper at St. Mike. Oh. Kid, you better keep that dog of yours away from Thug. Skip doesn't mean any harm. He's just being friendly. Yeah, well, Thug might not understand. He don't like nosy pooches. Half an hour later, the three men and the boy were seated around a rough pine table in the McGrath cabin, eating a tasty meal of bacon and beans that Matt McGrath had dished up. Man, these beans sure taste good. Well, eat hearty. There's more where that came from. <clears throat> you, uh, you fellas say you were heading for Dawson? Mm-hmm. That's right. Got a job waiting for us. A darn good job, too. Freighting goods down to Skagway for the Aurora Trade Company. Well. Hey, what's that? Well, sounds like thugs having a scrap. I'll go see you. A moment later, the three men heard the anguished voice of Timmy cry out. Dad! Dad! Oh, something's wrong. Timmy, what's wrong? 
Skipper. He's dead. Thug killed him. Just do this. This dog was like one of the family. He's been Timmy's pet ever since the kid was knee high to a grasshopper. Now Thug has killed him. By heavens, you're going to pay damages. Pay damages? Don't make me laugh. I warned the kid to keep him away from Thug. You heard what I said, Gannon. Fork over. Or would you rather I took it out of your hide? McGrath, you make one false move in my direction and Thug will tear you to pieces. Savvy? Yes, I... I savvy. Now you'd... You'd better get out of here. You'd better get going at once. It was later that same afternoon that Sergeant Preston and King arrived at the McGrath cabin on their way to Dawson. Gannon and Tate had long since hit the trail. Matt McGrath stood in the doorway and greeted his old friend. Well, if it isn't the sergeant, it's good to see you again. Good to see you again, Matt. <laughs> good old King. Come on in, boy. Come on. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Timmy. I didn't see you over there. King was wondering why you and Skipper weren't out to greet us. Skipper won't ever be greeting you again. What? You mean he's dead? Yes, he's... He's dead, all right. Another dog killed him. A big, ugly brute named Thug. I... I wish King had been here. I wish he had, too, Timmy. Who owns the dog that killed Skipper? A couple of tough-looking sardos named Gannon and Tate. Gannon and Tate, eh? Uh, Timmy, I expect to be seeing Gannon and Tate and Dawson. I'll have a little talk with those two. When Gannon and Tate arrived in Dawson, the two sourdoughs went first to the office of the Aurora Trading Company, where they were told that the freight sleds would leave for Skagway early the next morning. Then they headed for the Monte Carlo Cafe, where the huge, vicious-looking thug quickly became the center of attention. Mister, when you say this dog is as strong as fast as lead dog in territory, you're making a mighty big statement. I guess you've never heard of King. King? Who's he? Belongs to Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mountain. No dog living can match him for brains or strength. Now, mister, I never saw this king. But I got $500 in this poke. It says Thug here can outfight him or any other dog in the Yukon. Say, there's king. There he comes now with Sergeant Preston. So that's king, huh? I'm looking for a man named Gannon. Would that be you by any chance? Yeah, that's me, Marty. And this is my partner, Tate. Howdy. And this is my dog, Thug. So I gathered. I want to talk to you about that dog. Yeah, I want to talk to you about your dog, Monty. I got $500 in gold that says Thug can outfight King. Steady, King. Steady, boy. Sorry, Gannon, but I don't believe in betting or in dog fights. In fact, that's why I'm here to see you. What do you mean by that? Thug killed a dog named Skipper on Half Moon Creek. Yeah, what if he did? In that case, Gannon, you're going to pay Timmy McGrath $200 for a new dog. Two hu- Are you crazy, Preston? That dog Skipper was nothing but a useless muck. He wasn't useless to Timmy. $200 is a fair price for a full-grown dog here in the Yukon, Gannon. And that's how much you're going to pay. Hand me the money. I'll see that Timmy gets it. I'm waiting. All right, Redcoat. I'll pay. Gannon had thought fast and decided that the wise course would be to pay the cash. He counted it out grumbling. Late that evening, as Gannon sat in his hotel room, pulling off his heavy boots, his partner Tate came rushing in excitedly. Hey, listen, Gannon. You know that mounting Sergeant Preston you talked to in the cafe? Yeah, what about him? I just found out from one of the other drivers that he's going along with the Aurora outfit to guard the shipment. What? I said he's going along to guard the Aurora shipment. Realize what that means? It means we may not be able to steal that gold dust like we planned. Yeah. What are we going to do, Gannon? We don't want to kill a Mountie. That's too risky. I don't want to risk killing anyone. Wait a minute. I got an idea. Yeah, let's hear it. One of the bartenders over at the Monte Carlo is a pal of mine. Suppose I get some knockout drops from him and slip him to press in some night in his coffee while we're on the trail. I uh, see. Now, that's a smart idea. Now, wait a minute. What about that dog of his king? You can't slip him knockout drops. You won't have to. If I doctor up Preston's coffee strong enough, he won't be able to move the next morning. The outfit will go on, leave Preston and King behind. And then the next night, we'll grab the gold and make our getaway. <laughs> uh, Gannon put it there. You're really slick. <laughs> <laughs> 
Early the next morning, the Aurora freight sleds pulled out of Dawson and headed south for Skagway. The trail was hard packed, and the dog teams fairly flew over the snow. By the time they halted and made camp that evening, they had covered 40 miles. Sergeant Preston issued the evening ration to King and his dog team. All right, you husky. Here's your supper. Here's some for you, too, King boy. After feeding the dog, Sergeant Preston returned to his campfire to prepare his own meal. Hardly was the sergeant out of sight when a huge skulking form approached the feeding huskies. It was Thug. In a flash, he had snatched the food from one of the dogs and wolfed it down ravenously. With a deep-throated growl, King sprang to his feet. His master had warned him to avoid trouble with Thug, but no lead dog could ignore such a direct challenge to his leadership. With every muscle tensed for combat, the great gray dog made straight for the intruder. By the time for his showdown, it had not yet arrived. Hold it, King. Steady, boy. I'll handle this. Now then, Thug, clear out. Get back to your own team. Hey, what's the trouble here? Oh, it's you, Tate. Thug was stealing food from my huskies. You better get him out of here. <laughs> what's the matter, Sergeant? Can King protect his teammates' grub? He can, and he will. Next time Thug makes trouble, I'm going to let King teach him a lesson. Hey, what's going on here, you two? Oh, hello, Gannon. The sergeant was just complaining that Thug was acting up. Keep Thug under control, or there'll be trouble. Why, sure, Sergeant, we'll do that little thing. Come on. Nice work, Tate. You too, Thug. How'd you make out, Gannon? You managed to slip those knockout drops in Preston's coffee? He sure did. He was over arguing with you. That Molly will be plenty weak tomorrow morning. We'll continue our story in just a moment. <laughs> Fellas and girls, look it. Man, oh man, here's the tallest man I've ever seen. I am the tallest man. The tallest man in the world. Boy, you must be. Say, uh, how's it feel to be the tallest man in the world? No different. Gosh, I'll bet you eat a lot. Three good meals a day. Gee. What's your favorite meal? Breakfast, naturally. Breakfast, huh? Say, uh, ever eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat? Do I? Every day. Oh, you like rice or wheat shot from guns? Nothing better. Boy, you must be champion Quaker puffed rice and wheat eater. Buy them by the case. What do you like best about them? They're big. About eight times normal size, like <laughs> me. <laughs> Boy, I'll bet you use lots of milk and cream, huh? Got my own cow. Anything else you like about Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat? Well, that nut like flavor. And they're good for you. Yeah, that's right. A fellow like you needs plenty of food energy. Rice or wheat shot from guns furnishes extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Say, uh, mind if I ask you one more question? Go right ahead. Well, uh, tell me, uh, how's the weather up there? Oh, rather crisp and fresh, like Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. <laughs> Say, you are a fan. I guess you know Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh rice or wheat shot from guns, you always buy the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Fellas and girls, that's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The nutritious, delicious, ready-to-serve cereal shot from guns. Try them for breakfast tomorrow. Now to continue our story. On the morning after Gannon had drugged Sergeant Preston's coffee, the northern lights still flamed across the sky as the drivers rolled out of their blankets and began to build the fires for breakfast. Say, looks like the sergeant isn't awake yet. Something wrong with him, King? Sergeant. Hey, Sergeant, wake up. What? What's wrong? Why are you bending over me this way, Andy? Well, King was making a fuss over here. Looks like you're sort of under the weather. No, I'm all right. I guess I just overslept. I'll get up now. I... Oh, hey. Oh, my... Lucky I was here to catch you. Gone flat oh. in your face. You just call back inside those oh. blankets, Sergeant. You're in no shape to travel. But I must travel. I was assigned to guard this freight shipment. 
can argue with a fever, Sergeant. I guess one of the drivers had better take you back to Dawson. No, Andy, that's out of the question. Like fun it is. You can't take chances with fever. You can't spare any of the drivers. You've got to go on and get your freight to the landing. The boat won't wait for you. I'll be all right in a little while. I have some medicine that will lick fever in a hurry. Are you sure of that? Of course I'm sure, Andy. I'll take the medicine and rest a couple of hours and start after you. I'll overtake you on the trail. Sergeant Preston took the medicine that should have acted quickly to relieve his sickness and giddiness. But instead of feeling better, he felt immeasurably worse. He remained in the camp all that day and the following night until the effects of the drug had worn off. By the next morning, his strength had returned, and he hit the trail once more for Skagway, hoping to overtake the heavily laden freight sleds within the next 48 hours. On King! On, Husky! With King setting the pace, the sergeant traveled top speed over the hard-packed trail. It was noon when he saw another sled approaching from the opposite direction. The two sleds drew rapidly closer until... Hold King! Hold you, Husky! Hold now! Hold oh, you, Husky! Sergeant Chris! Man, am I glad to see you. Andy, why aren't you with the freight sleds? I thought you'd be halfway to Selkirk by now. I guess the sleds with the furs are that far. They're going on. I was heading back to Dawson to report to the law. My sled was robbed. Robbed? That's right. Happened last night. Two of the drivers stole the gold dust and made their getaway while the camp was asleep. Who were the drivers? Well, Gannon and Tate. Gannon and Tate, eh? Andy, it's beginning to add up. What do you mean, Sergeant? I mean that was no fever I had yesterday morning. Gannon and Tate must have doped my coffee the night before to get me out of the way. Come on, Andy. We're going to the scene of the robbery so we can pick up the trail of those two crooks. Untang! Run, your husband! Meanwhile, Gannon and Tate were putting as much distance as possible between themselves and the scene of the crime. Leaving the beaten trail so as to avoid running into Sergeant Preston, they headed back north for 40 Mile in the border. All night and all the next morning they traveled. Late that next day, they came in sight of a small cabin on Half Moon Creek. Oh! 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 Tate, you see what I see? I sure do. It's the cabin where that miner McGrath and his kid live. They probably got plenty of grub. Yeah. Well, let's go stock up. Must you, Husky? Must you, man? Come on in, mister. Dad! Huh? It's Gannon and Tate again. That's right, kid. You got a good memory. Hey, you've got nerve to come back here. What do you want? Take it easy, McGrath. When you see Sergeant Preston, you'll learn that we paid for your kid's dog. Paid for it? Yeah. Preston's got $200 of our money. He'll hand it over to you when he sees you. Now, the least you can do is to give us some grub. We're plumb out. You are out of luck, Gannon. Uh, We're low on food ourselves. We figured on starting for Dawson tomorrow to get some. Well, give us what you got anyway. Gannon, if you think I'm going to split our grub with you, you've got another thing coming. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe this will convince you. Dad, look out! You killed him. You killed my dad. He's not dead. He's just knocked out. And he can consider himself lucky we're not killers. Now, you stay out of the way, youngster, and leave us alone. We'll find the grub we want and get out of here. The fugitives had hoped to reach the border within the next two days. But on the morning after their stop at the McGrath cabin, a strong blizzard blew out of the north and forced them to a halt at a wayside shack. Meanwhile, King had followed the trail of the fleeing criminals to the McGrath cabin on Half Moon Creek. Okay. So they stopped at McGrath's again. I don't like the looks of this boy. Come on. Sergeant Preston. Oh, thank goodness it's you. What's the matter to me? Matt, what's happened? It was those two crooks. They knocked Dad down and took all our food. Hello there, Sergeant. Let me have a look at your head. Uh, those ornery crooks came back. So I hear. I don't think that's a serious injury, Matt, but you better be quiet for a few days. Well, I'll, I'll be all right. May help you feel better when I give you $200 I collected from Tate and Gannon. Uh, then they told the truth. They really did pay for my dog. Here's the money, Timmy. Gosh. I don't want to leave you and your father here alone, but I've got to get on their trail. Tell me, how far away is your nearest neighbor? Well, Frenchy LaRue has a cabin about five miles up the creek. Good. You go and ask him to stay with you and your father until I get back. Yes, sir. I'll leave King here. He'll stand guard until you return with Frenchy. <laughs> King objected strenuously when Sergeant Preston took up the trail without him. The snowfall became a blizzard and lasted for some time while Tate and Gannon sat in the shelter of a deserted shack. When the storm had blown itself out, 
Gannon rose to his feet and said, We're safe for now. <laughs> Snow has covered our tracks. Now listen. You stay here with the dog team and the gold. All right. I'll take Thug and see if I can scout up some meat. Half an hour later, on the ridge above the trail, Jake Gannon paused at the distant sound of an approaching dog team. Look at that, Thug. The mountain's on our trail. Gannon crouched behind the boulder and raised his rifle. That's Preston, all right. Well, Sergeant, I'm not going to kill a Maui. But I'm sure going to fix you so as you won't be in shape for traveling. The shot knocked Sergeant Preston off his feet. His well-trained team came to a halt at once. And a moment later, the huge dog thug ran up, followed by Jake Gannon. Oh, oh, oh. Shut up, Clear out of the way so I can see how bad he's hit. And don't try no funny stuff, Preston, because I've got you covered. Yeah. Guess you won't run very far with that wounded leg. But just to be on the safe side, I'll take that gun of yours. So it's you, Gannon. What do you intend doing now? Well, I could kill you. But I think you'll be a whole lot more useful as a live hostage. <laughs> At least two we get across the border. Jake Gannon loaded the Mountie on his sled and drove quickly back to the deserted shack where he had left his partner Tate with a stolen gold. As the sled drew up to the shack, Gannon was surprised to find no sign of his own dog. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, that's strange. What's happened to the sled and the gold? Why, that double-crossing rat. He's cleared out and taken the gold with him. Come on, Preston, get off that sled. So your partner's run off with the loot, eh, Gannon? Yeah, but he won't get far. I'm going after him as soon as I've dragged you into that shack and tied you up. Tying the wounded Mountie and leaving Thug on guard, Gannon traveled at top speed in the tracks made by his partner. Two hours later, Gannon saw Tate far ahead. Must you, Husky! Must! Slowly, the distance between the two sleds narrowed. As he finally drew within rifle range, Gannon jumped from his sled and took careful aim with his rifle. With a bullet through his back, Tate toppled from the sled, dead before he hit the ground. That fixes you, you double-crossing skunk. Now to get the gold and go back to that mountain. You'll know I've killed Tate, so I'd better shut his mouth, too. Meanwhile, Timmy had returned to his father with Frenchie LaRue and released the great dog King, who set off on a run in pursuit of Sergeant Preston. He reached the spot where the Mountie had been wounded. Here, King paused, his delicate nostrils catching other scents mingled with those of the sergeant and his dog team. It was the scent of man, the man whom his master had been chasing, and with it the scent of his own bitter enemy, the devil dog thug. King knew now that there was not a moment to lose. His beloved master was in deadly peril. Launching himself forward at a killing pace, he pressed steadily onward. Less than 15 minutes later, he came in sight of the shack where Sergeant Preston was lying bound and wounded. Without pausing, the great dog charged straight up to the cabin and hurled himself against the door. King, good boy! In a split second, King's keen eyes took in his wounded master and the huge beast that was guarding him. And then he braced himself for battle as Thug sprang straight for his throat. King met the rush with his chest in a manner that threw the other dog momentarily off balance. And as the huge beast whirled to recover, King's own jaws slashed savagely at the other's throat. Again and again, the huge beast lunged for the husky's throat. And again and again, King skillfully countered his charges, each time ripping his opponent with a lightning-swift slash of his fangs. Thug was panting painfully now, bleeding from a dozen different wounds. Summoning all his energy in one last burst of strength, King drove suddenly at his opponent and knocked him from his feet. Then King grabbed Thug by the neck and shook furiously. When he finally let go, Thug dropped to the floor, completely beaten. He was too weak to lift his head. Good work, King. Come over here, fellow. You've got to chew through these thongs. King had learned his lessons well. In a few moments, he had cut through the ropes and the mount he was free. And none too soon. Just as Sergeant Preston rose to his feet, Gannon stepped through the door. He was knocked to the floor by a charging gray form. No, help! Help me, Preston! Don't hang no. No. That dog! Your dog! Yes, Gannon. King has taken Thug. And now I'm taking you. I arrest you in the name of the Queen for the Aurora Gold robbery. And probably for the murder of your partner. All right. I, I know when I'm licked, Preston. You win. You and King. Gannon went to jail. Then, during the weeks and months that followed, Sergeant Preston worked each day with Thug. The devil dog no longer felt the lash. 
Instead, he knew kindness and understanding patience. His whole nature changed under the tutorage of Sergeant Preston and the great dog, King. And then one day, Thug went with King and the Mountie to the scene of an earlier adventure, the McGrath cabin. It was Timmy who opened the door. Sergeant, it's you. Did you bring me that new dog you promised me? Yes, I did, Timmy. Right outside here. Timmy, boy, I want you to meet your new master. Why, why, it's Thug. I've changed his name, Timmy. He answers to Skipper now. But I don't want this dog. I, I hate him. He's mean and he's a killer. Not anymore, Timmy. King and I have been training him. He's gentle now and he wants to be your friend. <laughs> you see, Timmy, you mustn't blame Thug for what he used to be. A dog simply reflects his master's character. Jake Gannon was a vicious master. Give Thug the love you gave Skipper and he'll repay that love a hundredfold. I guess maybe you're right, Sergeant. Come here, Skipper. <laughs> oh, well, well, dear. I never thought I'd see the day when Timmy had his arms around that dog. Yes, Matt. I guess everything's worked out happily after all. Thanks to King here, this case is closed. Remember, here's the breakfast that wins the praise of so many He-Man Hollywood movie stars. It's Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. You, too, will go for wheat or rice shot from guns. You'll want to try them starting tomorrow. You know, fellas and girls, it's easy to forget sometimes that many children can't run and play as you do. Not because they don't want to, but because their bodies won't let them. Something has happened through sickness or injury to cripple them. Over half a million boys and girls are depending on you and me to help. Here's what we can do for them. You and your family can buy Easter seals. When you buy Easter seals, you're giving these crippled children a chance to learn, to play, to go to camp, to get a job, to grow straight. That's what you do when you buy Easter seals. Don't fail to buy some tomorrow, sure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday, when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King... Meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Letters to a Killer. You know, I've often wished that King could talk. Would help a lot in many of my cases. But I've never wanted him to learn to read. Printed and written words can fool human beings, but they can't fool King. And it's just because of that that young Tom Warren is alive today. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. <laughs> For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.